And so that's our set, which parameterizes KGB. Yes? 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 Uh, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> the only reason I put the eyes there was to make it have determinant two. Uh, determinant two, excuse me. Determinant one. But then, but then so the action, I mean, it's still yes, but that's not an element of the group. One minus one is not an SL2. <laughs> Other questions? All right. Um, okay, so uh, what's the bijection of this, this, these three elements with the three orbits, zero, infinity, and the open orbit? Well, if you think about it, it's, it's sort of clear that this element is going to the open orbit, but how do you match these two elements with zero and infinity? And you don't. You, well, there's a, there's a choice there, and that's one of the delicate issues about choices. So let me say that. Um, <clears throat> so the, you really need to fix this x naught, and um, you look at this bijection. So I put the x naught in here to emphasize that the left hand side depends on x naught. And once you fix x naught, you have this bijection. And if you go back, uh, well, I didn't say where the bijection comes from, but if you go back to the algorithms paper, which is referenced on the website, you can see where this comes from. And if you unwind it, what you see is that uh, the bijection is as follows. Um, uh, suppose you take one of these x's on the right hand side. We, by assumption, it's conjugate to x naught. So choose a g which conjugates x naught to x. And then take x to this Borel subgroup, g inverse b, g, where b is the fixed, fixed, fixed Borel subgroup. Okay. And <clears throat> once you've made this choice of x naught and kx naught, then, then everything is well defined. And if I had, instead of choosing x naught, well, uh, maybe that's on the next slide, I forget. Uh, um, yeah, so the way we've chosen things, um, x naught is going to be, because that's where this element g is 1. Uh, minus x naught, how do you get from, how do you conjugate x naught to minus x naught? That's the, the element of the vial group, which changes b to its opposite. So x naught goes to b minus x naught goes to the opposite, and uh, well, I didn't say, and then the, the third one is uh, goes to the open orbit. And so you see here, um, if I had chosen my base, my k x naught to be in terms of, if I chosen minus x naught as my base point, I would have switched those two. So it's a very delicate matter, and and notice that x naught and minus x naught, they both have the same centralizer. So even this notation here is a little bit dangerous, which is that k x naught doesn't, well, k x naught doesn't determine x naught. k x naught and k minus x naught are the same. So uh, there's some choices there to be careful of. <clears throat> okay? All right. Now, what's this next slide about? Oh yeah, so the space x. So now that was just an example, um, and I'm going to define this space x. And I'm just going to look at the um, space, the, the compact inner class. So the Cartan inclinations I'm interested in are inner, they're conjugation by some element x whose square is central. And yesterday, David Bernard was asking about the um, central invariant of a real form. That's this x squared right here. <coughs> Um, so we define this space X, which is the set of um, X's in the normalizer of H, such that X squared is central modulo conjugation by H. So this is um, uh, it's, very, it's, it's very similar to the previous definition, except uh, I, instead of assuming X squared is conjugate to X naught, I'm just assuming that X squared is central. And so this is clearly the, the union of a bunch of, of these uh, spaces that I, I wrote down before, and it's this space that's essentially finite um, uh, because of if, if, because of the center. It, it, there could be some infinite. Uh, it could be infinite due to something having to do with the center, but um, that's the essential part. Uh, okay, and 
and um, and then if you uh, if you fix x naught, um, you get this previous definition that I was talking about. That the, this is a subset of this. It's the the elements which are kind of get to be given x naught, and um, this ah uh, yeah. So this is the precise statement. This original space x is finite provided g is semi-simple, and this x x naught is always finite. And it's this this guy here which parameterizes the KGB space for a single k. Okay. So the reason I'm mentioning that is that this this space x comes up in Atlas. It's a real it's a fundamental object in Atlas, and um, it has the KGB spaces for all of the real forms in the inner class built into it. Uh, most of the time, you fix a real form and you're just working with a fixed, you know, with one of these states, one of these sets. But it's, it's good to know that there's sort of this bigger space which has them all. All right, let me pause there. Questions? So, you said that space X is a union of the previous sets. Right, and X is the. Sets are finite. Yeah, so this space is a union of these spaces X naught. These guys are finite, and the union of these is equal to this. Uh -huh. And these are all finite, and this might be. Well, no, the, the inner class is fixed. We're talking about the compact inner class. Um, X, the way I think about X is it's specifying uh, a real form because it's specifying theta. But it's doing a little bit more than that. So this is what we call a strong real form. So this x just x satisfying x squared is central, and there's a map from strong real forms to real forms where you take x to theta x. Is this in the way? Uh, I mean, x is the element, and theta x is by definition conjugation by x. And this map is not necessary. This map is neither. Um, oh no, sorry. This map is surjective, but not necessarily injective. And because of the and so 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 the the. So, so the way to think about X is it's specifying the strong, uh, it's specifying the real form plus a little bit more. Yeah. What's the definition of strong? This. Oh, it, it's a strong real form it, it is an element X contained in G, but uh, X squared is contained in the center. That's oh. all. That's all it is. <clears throat> so, in, in in past iterations of these talks, I've I've spent a fair amount of time talking about strong real forms and the difference between strong real forms and so on. And when we first wrote the software, it did play a pretty important role. But as things have evolved, nowadays you can say set G is equal to SP4R. And you don't need to worry about all of this. So um, that's why I'm not emphasizing, I didn't introduce the terminology strong real form because we're not really going to need it. The, the strong real form notion is, is, is still more in our body equipment? Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is a notion of strong reform, and then there's a notion of equivalence of strong reforms, which is that. Or, yeah. Yeah. What's the use for this space X? It seems to me you're specifying in your class the ends and the orbits in your KGB at the same time. Why do you want to consider both of them together? So, let me write down a theorem and see if this helps. Theorem. Uh, there's a natural bijection between X and the union over some set S of K sub X mod G mod B, where X runs over the set of strong real forms, representatives of the strong real forms modulo notion of equivalence. 
So this space X naturally parameterizes all of the, the union of all of these KGB spaces in the given inner class. Okay, now, I'm not sure that was the question. So we're considering all these, all these pockets for a different, uh, for, for a given inner class again? Well, if we're talking about X, yes. Um, as I said, most of the time, um, we, you can focus on one of these, and then you're just talking about a single KGB space. And in, when you're working with the software, 90% of the time that's what you do. But it is worthwhile to keep in mind that there's this bigger universe where all of these KGB spaces are, are um, taken together. If you're writing software to compute this, it sort of looks easier to compute x than to compute x of x naught. So to compute x, you start with an involution in the vial group. And, and then uh, it, it, it's rep that's going to be represented by your x's. And, and then you want to look at all the representatives of that involution whose square is in the center. That, that's a, you can imagine that that's a reasonable thing to compute. Um, and imposing this <coughs> condition of being conjugate to some thing somewhere else is actually complicated. It, it, it's simpler to, to describe uh, X. I agree with 100%. And, 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 yes? Oh, I feel. All right. um, okay, so what's next? Uh, so here's a slight restatement of the preceding theorem. So how about all the other reforms that are not stopped? Sorry, say it again? So you have a definition for a stopped Yeah. But you can have other reforms. No, no, this, this map is surjective. The theorem says. This might be subjective. So if, if in, 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 never mind strong real form. You're interested in real form. Pick that real form. Okay? Now, you need to run the software, and you have to pick an X. So for that, you have to go over here and pick an X to use. But once you've done that, the, 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 then, then you're in business. But the, the natural place where the software is working is here. So, so I'm thinking, very in terms of evolutions. Yes. How do I get the task of fingers as uh, that's an excellent question. Let's do that example. So, um, when the group is SL2C, pardon me? In some cases, I, I, I can contribute to this. Uh, if it's SL3C, then it isn't. So, let, let me just do this example. What is X? X is the elements of the identity. That's always one. Minus the identity. I minus I. We write it as a matrix. I claim that's X. After you conjugate it by F by H, every element, this is this is the set of you're still missing. Ma'am? What am I missing? The, the negative. No, that's kind of good to this. I've, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've not done that. that, that you're right. I apologize. <clears throat> um, elementary exercise that, that every element of SL2. This is the this is the set of x contained in SL2 such that x squared is contained in the center modulo conjugacy. Uh, sorry, modulo conjugacy by h. Uh, x is in the normalizer. Sorry, sorry. This is the x contained in the normalizer. 
of H, such that X squared is central modulo of conjugation by H. Okay? So where does this go in terms of there's a map to real forms? The identity goes to conjugation by the identity, which is to say the identity. Minus the identity also goes to theta is the identity. Okay. Uh, this um, goes to um, uh, theta is conjugation by i minus i. And um, these two differ by the center, and they both map to the same thing. And then, uh, um, well, uh, this, what would I say? Um, this goes to conjugation by i minus i, this goes to conjugation by minus i i, and this goes to conjugation by 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Okay. So what are the real forms in question? Well, when theta is the identity, that's the compact form. This is SU2. And this is also SU2. What is the identity of theta? Sorry, what? Because theta is the identity. And um, these three are all mapping to the real, to the real form SU11. Okay. Now, these three elements are, in fact, so, so when you're talking about the space H, X, you're only modding out by conjugation by H. Uh, but when you're talking about real forms, you mod out, you mod out by conjugation by G. These are all G conjugate. And then it's the uh, SL2C. Everything's going on inside SL2C. These are all SL2C conjugate, which is to say they're all mapping to the same real form here. Um, well, they're the same, anyway, they're conjugate. But here, obviously, the identity and minus the identity are not conjugate. And so this is, um, is the first instance of what we call a strong real form. Um, the, the point is, uh, I, I can think of this as being SU20 versus SU02. So <clears throat> there's only one compact real form of SL2, the compact real form of SU2. But it has two strong real forms, I and minus I, because those both give the same uh, Cartan evolution. And it's safe to think about those as SU20 and SU02. These groups are obviously isomorphic, but we think of them as being two different strong real forms. say that that fifth conjugation there is minus transpose. Ah, yes, that, that's a good point. Um, conjugation by 0, 1, minus 1, 0 is uh, applied to a trace 0 matrix X. Is that right? On the nose? That's correct if x has trace 0. Or, well, they are in here, so as you really say. G is in SL2. So, those of you, you're familiar with. Uh, the Cartan evolution for SL2 being transpose inverse, it's a little surprising, it's actually inner. Now, that's not true for SL3. SL in, in, in SLNC, um, theta of G is equal to transpose G inverse is not inner. Um, if N is bigger than or equal to 3. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so um, what, what I, I, um, I, I meant here is, is in, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the compact inner class. Um, the same statement holds true for any inner class, but it requires a little bit of extra verbiage. Well, I'm going to in, in 10 minutes, or probably at this point next time. I have a couple of slides about that, but um, I'll come back. Uh, okay, so I started a quarter of, I don't want to drag this on too long, um, but I also enjoy answering these questions and they're useful, so I don't want to go too fast either. Um, okay, so here's another dangerous bend, which is that, um, uh, this this X that we're talking about is only an H conjugacy class of things, and so this this involution theta X is not quite well defined. There's some X, there's, if you don't have an element of, of G, you have a coset, and um, uh, so to, to be really precise, there's a slight further choice that's necessary, but. I'm going to almost always gloss over this. It's usually, it's, it, in fact, it's safe to do it because two different choices of x in the setting, they, there is a canonical way to identify them. So it's, it's safe to be a little bit sloppy at those. Unlike some of the previous points where it's not. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so here's a picture of the KDB space for SP6R. So. Kx with primarily many orbits on the flag variety, and therefore the closure relations um, gives you a Hasse diagram. And this is the Hasse diagram for SP6. There's a single open orbit, and there are eight closed orbits, and the closure relations are illustrated by this diagram. And the atlas will produce these diagrams for you, for any group. Yeah, so uh, the, at some point I'll talk a little bit more about the structure theory behind this, and um, there are uh, um, di different kinds of operations giving these relations. So the, the blue lines, I think, I think the blue lines are tailings, huh? I would say that the, the three colors correspond to the three simple groups. It uh, does it distinguishably not right. Oh, so yeah. Oh, to the bottom. Yeah, so I guess yeah. the blue would have to be here. Yeah, the blue would be We'll come back to that. I always forget. <laughs> but it's some further, uh, I mean, they're all, in terms of closure relations, they're all the same color. But um, the different colors are specifying a little bit more structure. <coughs> okay, so let me talk about, uh, so, so I said that the space X is really fundamental to everything we're doing. And let me illustrate that by talking about a couple of other properties. So I've already mentioned that this space X naught is parameterized in KGB. So that's the first thing. Uh, second of all, if you take this space X, there's, there's, it's easy to see the W acts on it by conjugation. Um, so you can, if you want out by that, it turns out that this is um, parameterizing the theta stable Cartan subgroups in your group, which is to say the real Cartan subgroups the real conjugacy classes of real Cartan subgroups. So this is a basic structural thing that we need to know, and it's beautiful that it's just handed to us, to us by the space X. Okay. And thirdly, uh, it hands you the bottom loop. The, uh, uh, the bottom loop is acting on the space, and this, this rational bottom group, or also, I mentioned this in an earlier slide, this WKH group, is simply the stabilizer, uh, K is in this print, it's the stabilizer in W of X. Uh, so all this stuff that we need to know is has been reduced to the combinatorics of the space X. It's fabulous. When we talk about the blue, uh, worked this out in 2004 or five or so, and it was amazing to see. <laughs> all right. So let's look at these further properties in the setting of our example. So we're talking about SL2, 
And so I'm going to fix, uh, I'm going to call it T now. I don't remember why, but I am. Uh, this diagonal is I minus I. And this space is, as I mentioned, these three elements, T minus T and W, written out there. So that's the KGB space, the three or elements on forwards on KGB. Uh, if you mod out by W, um, these two elements uh, go to each other. And so after you mod it out by W, there are two elements. And that, cor the, that corresponds to uh, the two carton subgroups, the compact carton and the split carton. That is to say that T and minus T, there's a map to the conjugacy class of the carton subgroup. T and minus T both map to the compact carton, and W maps to the split carton. And the way you see that is you simply take theta sub x. So if, if you take T is diagonal, theta sub T is the identity. And when you restrict it to the carton, it's acting by the identity, so the carton is compact. On the other hand, W is acting on the, on the diagonal carton by minus 1. So that is to say the corresponding real group is split. Okay? And uh, the last thing is the vowel group. Um, uh, the stabilizer of T in the vowel group is trivial because the non-trivial element of the vowel group takes t to minus t. And that is to say that in SL2, the normalizer of the compact torus, the vowel group of the compact torus, is trivial. Uh, the, 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 the absolute vowel group is z2, but the non-trivial element doesn't live in the real group. You have to pass to, it only lives in the complex group. But uh, if you take w, it turns out that uh, if you uh, the stabilizer of W is W. The stabilizer of small w is big W. That is to say, if you act on this element by an element of the vowel group, you get another element which is still H conjugate to it. And so that says that for the split carton, the rational vowel group is Z2. So it's a tremendous amount of, of, of valuable information um, being laid at your doorstep. Okay, so let's do a slightly bigger example. Let's look at SP4. So uh, in Atlas, and I'll probably do this this afternoon, um, the, the KGB is handed to you as a number list starting at zero. I believe I started at one. Um, that was a mistake. Um, it's, a, it's a number list. And so, uh, and there's this print KGB command. And this is the output in the case of SP4. So the, the, the orbits are labeled 0 through 10. That is to say there are 11 orbits. And the corresponding vowel group elements are listed in a particular notation here at the end. The first four are mapping to the identity element. And there's some other element information in the middle here related, oops. Some other information here which I'll talk about another time involving uh, types of roots and daily transform, oh, uh, and, and various things, and this business over here. Um, and right over here is the dimension of the orbit. So there's a lot of extra, yeah, well, in this case. Uh, actually, not even in this case. No? Distance of the closed orbit. The closed orbits are one dimensional. Uh, sorry, you, you're right, you're right. It's, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, you're right. It's um, this is dimension plus the shift. Um, so, so there's a lot of extra information, and, and Joe's question about the the arrows in that the the, the the edges has to do with all this stuff in the middle. But I'm just going to boil it down uh, to something more comprehensible. Uh, this table was extracted from this output of Atlas, but I just simplified it and made it into more comprehensible terms. So there are 11 KGB elements. And again, this, the dimension of the orbit is off by one. These are, um, uh, uh, anyway, so these, these numbers are off by one. That's the dimensions. And associated to any KGB element is a carton. And these first four are associated to the compact carton, which is S1 cross S1. And the corresponding element of the vowel group, this, this theta x in this case, is, is an element, it's an involution in the vowel group. And for these first four guys, it's the identity. And then uh, for this guy, the involution in the vowel group is the simple reflection through the short root. And the corresponding carton is C cross. 
And down here, there's another where in, instead of you, you, you conjugate this reflection by S2, you get the carton here, same carton. These four elements are going to the carton, which is isomorphic to S1 cross R cross. And the, there's a single element which is mapping to the split carton. And for that, the uh, carton evolution is minus the identity. So that is to say, if you take this element of the vowel loop in the last column and apply it to H, that's the carton evolution defining the real form. So the identity is defining the compact form. Minus the identity is defining the split form. And then there are two other conjugacy classes of involutions. There's the short reflection and the long reflection. And it turns out that the short reflection is giving you the carton, which is C cross. And uh, the other reflections are giving you the other carton. So um, that's quite far along the path to understanding the representation theory of SP4, uh, we have the cartons, and, and, and well, more than the cartons, we have all the KGB. The last column is not the Well, no, because it's 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 um, it's after you pass to the volume. So, um, like this element right here is. Um, Uh, I, the, the first four elements are um, x0 is probably i minus i minus i i, and x1 is probably minus i i i minus i, and x2 is i i minus i minus i, and this going here. Um, X3 is minus I, minus I, 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 I'm not positive I have those right, but I think I do. And um, these four elements are all conjugate by the vowel group. So they're all defining, and, and, and the, the, I mean, if you look down here, the conjugation by X2, conjugation by X2 is equal to conjugation by I minus I. Just like you said, for that you can replace I with one. And um, what's the what is the centralized GL two? So um, G upper theta two is equal to GL two C. So the corresponding um, K of R is U two. And all four of these, the, cent the, the centralizer is GL two C, but conjugates of each other. And, um, oh yeah, and then, the, but the point is, in the map to W, these elements all map to E, because they're in the carton. So there's a little bit of extra information here by when you pass to the 